In this week's Weather Extra, we're going to have a little bit of fun visualizing just how wild this rainfall year has been. And the first map I'm going to show you, I think, really depicts the wild nature of the water year so far. And remember, the water year is how we tally rainfall for the year here in Northern California. It starts on October 1st and goes through September of the next year. That way we bracket the entire winter. <laughs> this is one of my favorite maps. This is showing you the departure from average for rainfall for this water year so far since October 1st. The colors are pretty bright and wild on here. But there is a pattern that really shows up when you look at the Bay Area. There's a gash going right through the Bay Area where you get the most extreme colors. And what's that showing you is for the state of California right now, here at home, right through the heart of the Bay Area, we're having the more extreme year than anywhere else in the state in terms of being over the charts for being above average for rainfall so far. Those deep shades of blue on there going right through the bay, right over San Francisco and up into Contra Costa County, that shows you where so far we're at 160% of average for rainfall for this point in the year. Even with this terrible January that we've had so far, we're still at 160% of average for the year as a whole. I'm gonna to talk to you about January in a second because that's not a pretty picture. But this image is so striking because it drives home the point of the one singular event that has really marked the extreme nature of this year's rainfall totals more than anything else. It was that October atmospheric river. I know December was really good. In fact, if you look at December and October, both months, we got about the same amount of rainfall for both months. In October, we got just a little over seven inches of rain for the whole month. In December, we got about seven and three quarters inch of rain for the whole month. But those seven inches of rain in October were about 750% of average for the month of October. We don't get nearly that much rain in October. I'll show you the difference here in a second. And when we did it in December, that's seven and three quarters inch of rain that we got in December, that was a lot, but it was only 150% of average for December. So what we're seeing here is the mark that has been left on the state from the extreme nature of that atmospheric river, which by the way, just to watch it again, that was October 24th. And this was a direct hit. This is why the Bay Area has got that blue gash going right through it because that most extreme atmospheric river took direct aim right here at us. It's been a while ago. I know we're all still thinking about how active December was, but it was that more than anything else which is really marking this year. And atmospheric rivers often make or break rainfall years and that one certainly did set us up. And then we did get a lot of help in December. Now, January has been awful. This is a way of visualizing just the total amount of rain that we've gotten so far for January. And when you get into the shades of purple there and, and into some of the blue, it shows you here at home, we've gotten only about six tenths of an inch of rain total for the month in January. We should get on average about four and a half inches in the month of January. So right now we're missing out on about four inches and this map shows you the departure. I love all of these different ways to visualize rainfall across the state. When you get into those deeper shades of brown, like we're seeing here, it shows you you've missed out on about four inches. So we're gonna leave behind this map and just give you that review again. Here's how rainfall plays out across the Bay Area, specifically for San Francisco over the course of a year. You can see how important January is. We get four and a half inches of rain on average in January. By the way, we got uh, a little over seven inches of rain in October. That was our 750% of average. We got just about the same amount in December, but it was only 150% of average. So that kind of explains the difference and why we see that huge gash going right across the Bay Area for why we're so far above average here at home. Thank you very much, October 24th. Really leaving your mark on this year. January though, January's been letting us down. So if the average rainfall for January is a little under four and a half inches, we've only gotten six tenths of an inch of rain here. The last time it rained was January 7th. Now, if it doesn't rain again for the rest of this month, if we get no more rain through January 31st, and it's possible that might not happen, we're watching the forecast, but right now it looks likely. And if that comes to be, that will make 24 days in a row without rain in the month of January. And that's dramatic but it's not all that out of the ordinary. And if you look at the climate records, we go on average, we get about 19 days in a row in any given winter. We'll go at least, you know, 
a 19-day stretch where it doesn't rain at all. So this 24-day stretch is a little above that, but it's not too far off the mark. And by the way, it could be a lot worse. We've gone 56 days before without getting rain, 56 days in a row. That was from late January into late December into early January back in 2015 when we were really in the depths of the last drought. So just a little perspective there. Here's how we break that. Whether or not we get rain by January 31st or not, it looks much more likely we will be getting rain by early February because we can see signs of this dominant pattern in the atmosphere which pretty much robbed us of rainfall in January. That's gonna to start to change. If you take a look at the deep shades of red on here, this map is showing you where you've got high pressure in the deeper shades of red as compared to low pressure. And for much of January, the atmosphere has been locked in this pattern. We've had a semi-permanent block of pretty strong high pressure right off the coast of California. And that's what it looks like. When you go into long periods without rain in California, it's because you get this semi-permanent high right off the coast. It's normal. California does that often, and it can last a while, as we've seen. It lasted for most of January. I'm going to let this play. As we go through late January you, and into early February, you're going to see it reverse. And by the time we get into early February now, we finally see the focus for low pressure setting up over California. This is why we're hopeful as we start out the month of February, whether it comes in the last few days of January or in the first few days of February, as we transition from one month to the next, we're very hopeful we're going to break out of this pattern. And February should not be a repeat performance of January, at least not for the first part of it. Keep your fingers crossed. We'll have to see how this goes. We really need February and March to come through. It's great that we're at 160 percent of average at this point, but that number could really fall behind. February and March, as we saw on that graphic, are still big months for us. And if they don't come through, we could say goodbye to that well above average aspect of rainfall for this year. So February and March, those books are still yet to be written. And we'll be watching and forecasting closely as we go through it. That's week's, uh, this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.